Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math, Math Shack. Hi, today we're going to look at rotations. Before I do that, before I do the like what we are mathematically going to look at in this lesson, I want to talk about this amazing um, thing that's going on at the moment. You are on Earth as you as you read this, probably anyway, and you are hurtling through space. And you are going around the sun, and the sun itself is orbiting around the galaxy. And it's supposedly there's a big, I think there's a big black hole in the center of the galaxy, but there's lots of rotations going on. So the sun is rotating around itself, around the galaxy. The earth is rotating on its own axis and around the sun. The moon is rotating around the earth. Lots of rotations going on. If we look at this left hand, this is a model, a 2D model of the solar system. We see all this happening. And it looks like the planets are orbiting in circles. They're actually they're actually ellipses. They're not quite circles, um, but they're quite close to being circles. So maybe a bit more like that. If they're really elongated, they might be a bit like that. We then got in pink the asteroid belt, and I think these ones in grey are meteors that kind of you know they kind of hop in and side and outside some of the uh, each other. Um, this one on the right is it shows again the planets orbiting a bit slower now and then it shows also the planets orbit uh rotating around their own axis so here that i'm pointing at is earth and you can see this is how we get day and night when we're facing towards the sun or away from the sun towards the sun day and away from the sun night how do we get summer and winter well that's to do with the tilt of the planet because actually the earth doesn't rotate perfectly it like rotates a bit like this i think so Sometimes of the year, you might get this point being um, it just faces the sun a lot more and you get warmer weather, whereas some of the other, you know, other parts will get less, less it'll be further away from the sun and it'll, it'll be colder. Um, but that's just a little summary then of rotations going on in our solar system. Okay, let's look at what we're going to be doing mathematically. We're going to be looking at scenarios like this. So we're still going to have a center of rotation going on and we're still going to have things rotating but we're going to look at like a single rotation so it might be maybe that it the blue one rotates to here so my question to you is what would i what would you need to what information would you need to be able to know to get to here pause the video have a think well there was a little spoiler at the bottom i just realized but um, one thing you'd need is you need to know which direction to rotate, because if I went this way, it would be longer than if I rotated the other way. You can rotate either direction. And what we say is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So clockwise here, the, way, the same way the hands move around the clock, and anti-clockwise, the opposite. You also need to know the direction that you are, sorry, um, not the direction, we've done a direction. The amount that you're rotating, because actually in this case, if we went clockwise and anti-clockwise, we could end up in the same place, but it would be different amounts. So you need the amounts that you're rotating by. And we don't say a quarter of the turn or half a turn at this point. We start saying things like an, an amount of degrees that you are turning. So imagine that you are facing up at the start, for example. Um, how much? So now I'm facing to the right. What? how much is this turned it's actually turned by 90 degrees this would be a 90 degree rotation clockwise or it would be 270 degrees anti-clockwise so both of these rotations would be valid you'd probably go with the clockwise one because it's a bit shorter but you could say 270 degrees anti-clockwise and finally you do need the center rotation because if you move the center rotation it will rotate in a different way so those are the three things, angle, direction, and center. Let's just dwell on this a little bit further. So if I start rotating, I've got an object. If I start rotating it anti-clockwise, you can see the amount of degrees going on, 30, 40, 45 here. When you get to 90, we, you can see that we're actually instead of pointing up, like this, this part pointing up, it's now pointing to the left. We've it's got it's moved 90 it's rotated 90 degrees there'd be a 90 degree angle between this vertical line and this horizontal line we can keep going okay so i'm just basically doing it a little bit more slowly than that other animation and 
oh sorry I jumped a little bit and once we get to 360 we're basically back to zero. Now what if I move the center of rotation? What I'll get is a different a different kind of orbit I suppose. You can see it as. I'm now rotating anti-clockwise so here we go and if I you know if I as I move the orbit it it will change and I could actually this would be how I might rotate it around itself so for the earth there's more than one center of rotation because it's uh it's it's going around the sun that's one center of rotation it's also going around itself so it's got a center of rotation there as well so you can have multiple ones but that's just a little snapshot of what's going on we can as we move the center of rotation the rotation changes and as we rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise we get different things going on as well. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of rotating objects. Triangle ABC in this case. 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So we're given the amount, we're given the direction and we're given the center of rotation. So the origin is actually this point here it's zero zero. For this rotation, what the best thing to do is to get some tracing paper. So you get some tracing paper. And you can you should have a go at this. You put your tracing paper on top and then you put your pen or pencil on the origin and that will make it act as the center of rotation. Actually before you do that, what you need to do is draw around the shape. So you've got your tracing paper on there, you draw around the shape, and then at that point, you put your pencil on the center of rotation and you rotate you rotate the tracing paper, and this in effect rotates the object. So if I wanted to go, well, actually to start with, let's just move it around. Let's orbit the center of rotation. You can see we're going around, let's practice that. Okay, and at the end, you'll get back to the start. Right now, I want to go. 90 degrees anti-clockwise so I think I might just put a little up arrow to show the way it was facing and if I go 90 degrees um, I want anti-clockwise means it's going to go away from this it's going to go this way and it's going to be when the arrow is essentially pointing to the left and it's going to be oh, I went too far it's going to be there so now like if I had moved my arrow I'd actually kept it in the same place it would now be moving to the left and that is my rotation. I have rotated it 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. And just to complete it, what I would do, I'm going to use a straight line for this. I, I would then, I mean, I've done it already, but you would you would basically kind of take the tracing paper away a little bit and manage to draw the triangle in the place that it was. So you're going to, you know, you're going to basically maybe put the points down, like you sort of take the tracing paper away, put the points down for where the triangle is, and then join it up and you could just check you know is that yes is that in the right place or, or just lift it it's, i can't lift it on here but like lift it put the left hand point down you know put it back down find where this point is and so on so that is our first example tracing paper is the way to go so let's try that for the second one put our tracing paper on top let's highlight the center of rotation in this case it's one one so it's here Draw an outline of the shape on the tracing paper. Put an up arrow if you like. And then put your pencil on the cross. Rotate it 180 degrees. So now it's going to be when the arrow is pointing down. Okay, so that's 90 degrees clockwise here. Is 180 degrees clockwise. Note the question didn't say to do it clockwise though. So what if I'd done it anti-clockwise? Well, we'd have started here. This would have been 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And then it would have been here. And actually it ends up in the same place. It doesn't matter. When you're moving at 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if you're going anti-clockwise or clockwise. So have your shape here, lift up the trace and paper bit by bit and draw your final shape in and then take the tracing paper away 
voila, we are done. We have managed to rotate a shape around a point by an amount, either 80 or 90 degrees in this case. We are given directions in some of the cases, and these are the skills that you need to practice. So onto the task. Here is a sheet with loads of rotations to practice. We've got all these different centers of rotation. And then on each shape, it says how, um, how much to rotate it by and which direction and which point to rotate it about. So sometimes the point is used more than once. Um, and have a go at this activity. If you can master this, then you're in a really good place for your rotations. Right, I'm going to show you the answer to this uh, in about 10 seconds. So I hope, you know, hopefully you pause the video and you've had a go at this. You should know if you got it right at the end because it's going to spell a word. And here is what it should look like when you do it. So the word rotate comes out. If you got that, brilliant. If you made a mistake, try and figure out what you did wrong um, and correct it. You know, it's really important. Take your time with it. Use the same piece of tracing paper. Just draw the different shapes every time. Be careful as you do this and then it will all be good. Okay, brilliant. My extension today is quite an advanced one. First of all, it assumes that you are familiar with the equation of a circle centered at the origin, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It then takes that and brings in the idea of an equation of an ellipse, which is more complicated because actually a circle is an example of an ellipse. It's just, uh, by the way, an ellipse is when it's like more like that. But if you sort of bring it together, then you'll actually get back to a circle. So a circle is a special case. And, you, you know, you can see in this equation, if I set some, um, I'll have to rearrange it a little bit. OK, but I could get back to x squared plus y squared plus r squared. In any case, I've taken this equation and I put it together in a 2D model of the solar system. This can be found at this web link, and it looks like this. What I'd like you to do is, well, the scale's accurate. It's in terms of astronomical units. Instead of measuring in centimetres or kilometres, because the Earth is so far away from the sun, we kind of define a new scale as, uh, well, an astro one astronomical unit is the mean distance of the Earth from the sun. It's, you know, it's hundreds of thousands of kilometres. Um, but rather than writing that, we just say it's, it was good back to one because then it's more easy to compare with, say, other planets. I want you to play around with the model, change the numbers, and try and figure out what H, K, and A are, and think about what how you might be able to fit Pluto in. You might need to do a bit of research. So have a go at this, pause the video, and then I'm just going to talk about a few aspects of it. Not, not the whole picture, and it might not be what you looked at, but just a few things. Okay, well, first of all, you see we've got one, two, three, four of the planets here. So it's Mars. I always remember it's my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. So Mars, Venus, Earth. Wait, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Sorry, got that mixed up. Um, so here we go. And, and you can see that they look roughly like circles. Uh, we zoom out, we see the other ones. Okay, so then we've got Neptune as the final one, like I haven't put Pluto in. Um, so I think the thing is that I wanted you to do is like just play around with this. Just uh, what would happen if we look at Earth? Earth is the purple one. You can see, ah, okay, I said that one was an astronomical unit. And here it's slightly different. Um, but maybe if I change this one to two, what's going to happen? You can see that this is relating to how much the lip stretches, basically. If I change this to two as well, it's going to go back to a circle. So when these numbers are close, it looks roughly circular. Maybe you played with this one as well. So what if I changed it to one? And it suddenly jumps to the to the right. The more negative it is, the more it's moving to the right. And you could even, you know, you could have perhaps have done something like this. Why? minus one and it, it jumps up interesting when i change it to get rid of the y squared i actually get a parabola back because it's a it's a y equals x squared kind of graph okay when i put that back in the y is being squared so you could, could have played around with that but in any case so these top two numbers seem to be the position 
related to the position of, say, the center, although the center of an ellipse is a bit harder to define. Well, it's not normally defined, that other things are defined, but it kind of gives you that idea anyway. So that's what I was looking for. And actually, it turns out, if we write it down, hold on, H is actually the horizontal displacement of the curve. And K is the vertical displacement of the curve. It means from the center. So it's, it, sorry, from the origin. So it's talking about the center, essentially. A is the radius of the curve in the x direction. And B is the radius of the curve in the y direction. So you can see now when they're about the same, it's going to be about the same radius. But when I change it and I can, and I can make one, let's, let's, let's stick with Earth. You know, if I change this one, I can, it goes that way. So suddenly the y radius becomes bigger. Um, for our planets, it's, they're roughly circular, like I said, but you can see that they're, you know, actually, they're not circles, they're rough, they're actually ellipses, it's just that the changes are so small in some cases. For example, the green one, uh, Venus, per, you know, to four significant figures, it seems like it's actually exactly the same, very circular. And I would say we spot more difference later on, but not really for that one. Probably the most pronounced is this one, where it's the third decimal place has a discrepancy. I think that one is Jupiter. Which one is that? This one here. I've lost track of which one it was. Okay, just the final question then about Pluto. Actually, this is a hard question because Pluto doesn't follow the same sort of pattern as this. It actually, it kind of, it comes inside some of the planetary orbits for some of the time and then outside. I think it switch, sw switches over with Neptune. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really look like a circle, which is which is one of the key reasons why it was declassified as a planet. But that doesn't mean we can't have a little go at it. And that's all I wanted to do, because it's a distance of thirty nine point five astronomical units. That's that's basically nearly 40 times as far away from the sun as Earth is. You can see why it's so useful to work in astronomical units because you can you can straight away make these comparisons. It's got now this one does have a very elliptical orbit, um, so it's not the same distance at all all the time. In fact, a, there's big discrepancies, whereas there's not with the other planets. Its closest point is actually 30 AU, so it's a big difference. So 10. 10 worths of distance from the Earth from the Sun discrepancy between how far it is um, away from the Sun. So sometimes it crosses Neptune's path. Neptune is 30 AU from the Sun. So I suppose if I was going to have a quick go at this, I might maybe, maybe I'd introduce a new equation and I'll put 40 in and 30 in. And that will just get me the rough idea of what's going on for Pluto. Let's, let's take a look. This isn't you know, exactly how it is. Let's just say the center is zero zero again. I'm not gonna or the same as Neptune's. I'm not gonna stress too much about that. But if we change this to what was it, thirty nine point five, and it's a, it was about twenty nine point five, wasn't it? Twenty nine point seven. Okay, and uh, you know you can see it goes inside. I think it's off of a kind of an angle as well, so it sort of looks like this kind of thing. So I don't think it's as pronounced as it was, but this is just to give a rough idea about Pluto. Anyway, I hope you took something away from that. You'll, if you ever do A level maths, you'll see you'll start looking at circles. You won't cover ellipses, but you'll cover circles that are not centered at the origin, and you might be able to get a feel now what that equation would look like. You could have a go at writing that down and look it up. For ellipses, we get this extra, you know, you get these extra bits because we don't have a constant radius. You sort of have these two radii in some sense. It's, it's more complicated than that, actually. But yeah, a worthwhile investigation. Well done.